So now we're inside the old cinema. Watching a video about the old Manila. There's only the three of us in here. That's the old Manila hundreds of years ago. The walls are what characterize this historic heritage. These encompass the original city of Manila and gave her the distinctive feature as well as the name Intramuros within the walls. The four and a half kilometer wall completely enclosed the city, averaging almost six meters high and four and a half meters thick. It presented a redoubtable barrier against foreign invasions and local uprisings. Built from volcanic stone quarried locally, the walls have endured to this day. And today, through the efforts of the Intramuros administration, almost all of the damaged parts of the walls have been repaired or restored.
laid out according to the best battle plans of the time. The walls of the Nauros are fortified by layers of defenses. Bulwarks, or balwanes, are wide platforms along the walls. Batteries of cannon were positioned on top and powder magazines below. San Andres. San Francisco de Milan. San Gabriel. San Diego, which was breached when the British invaders captured in Camulos in 1762. Ravelins, or Revelines, provided cover for the gates. The Redoubts, or Redoubts, are small but well-armed independent structures outside the walls that could fire on the advancing enemy or those that have reached the walls. The main garrison was Fort Santiago, strategically located at the mouth of the Pasi River. Built on the remains of the palisade of Soliman, the Raja of Manila, who defied the Spanish when they landed in 1570. Fort Santiago is a city protected by its own bulwarks and moat. When the Philippines was sold to the United States in 1898, the Americans made it their military headquarters. Fort Santiago now houses the Inamuros Visitor Center, the Audiovisual Theater, Museum Shop, the Almacenes Reales as a venue for functions and the museum that showcases memorabilia of the Philippine national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. In the works, the reconstruction of the American barracks as a restaurant. As the capital of Spanish colonial Philippines, Intramuros was the hub of government, religion, and culture. The Palacio del Gobernador was the residence of the governor's general. The Ayuntamiento housed the colonial administrative offices, during the American occupation at the turn of the 20th century, it became the legislative building of the Philippine Commonwealth. Aduana, the customs house and the docks. Intendencia, the public treasury. These historic buildings, scheduled for restoration, will significantly add to the character of present-day Intramuros. Intramuros was also the seat of the Catholic Church, the other prime mover of colonization. The Manila Cathedral was the grandest building, and it evolved through the centuries as it suffered fires, earthquakes, and invasions. Here the missionaries, the vanguards of the Catholic faith, built their best churches and convents. Among them, Santo Domingo, San Ignacio, San Francisco, Recoletos, Lourdes, only San Agustin survived the ravages of the last World War. And they established schools, such as the University of Santo Tomas, the Ateneo Municipal, San Juan de Letran, among others. From these schools emerged the intellectuals who would defy the colonizers. The residences adapted to the tropics, Wooden columns that resisted earthquakes better than stone foundations. Large windows for maximum ventilation. Steep roofs to shed torrential rains. The best examples have been rebuilt in Plaza San Luis, a cluster that includes Casa Manila. As the commercial entrepot of Asia, Intramuros allowed its residences to be showcases for the unique melding of cultures. Here, the works of Philippine craftsmen stood side by side with those from Europe and Asia. The flavor of Old Intramuros has been maintained by the restoration of other structures and by designing new buildings in the colonial style. Intramuros has survived ravages of time, natural disasters, wars, and neglect. As it has done so many times in her past, she is again on another threshold in her evolution. The 
parks and other places within the Enco are being revitalized. Aside from the Calesas, motorized tranvias are available for leisurely tours. A full schedule of cultural art events are spent here in the different venues within the walled city. A new maritime museum will rise to house the rich though largely undiscovered nautical tradition of the Philippines. The Church of San Ignacio will be reconstructed and made into a museum for the ecclesiastical collection of the Intramuros administration. As she has done so many times in her past, Intramuros, the walled city, rises again. Steadily shedding off the veil that has concealed her charm. Revealing to us and the following generations a priceless heritage that resounds through the centuries. There you go. A bit of a historical background. Into Morris and have a look at this theatre. The theatre is inside one of the prison cells. So they used to lock people up here, and now they show them videos. <laughs> nice little aircon theatre inside Intramuros. Well, that was an interesting little historical film showing us some of the background of Manila City.